Welcome back, everyone. So last time we talked about the linear system of equations x dot equals ax plus bu, where x is a state vector that describes the state of a system, and u is a set of input signals. So these are our control knobs that we can use to hopefully modify the behavior and the dynamics of x. Okay, And at the last time, we came to this controllability matrix, so curly C is a matrix uh, given by the columns in B, followed by the columns in AB, followed by the columns in A squared B, all the way up to A to the N minus 1 B. And we have this simple relationship, so I haven't told you why yet, but we have this simple relationship that if the rank of this controllability matrix equals n. So in some sense, if the number of linearly independent columns of this equals n, which is the dimension of my state, so x is in R n. If the rank of this controllability matrix is n, the dimension of my state space, then this is true if and only if the system, system is controllable. Uh, and that's exactly how we say it, controllable. Okay, so the system is controllable if and only if the rank of this controllability matrix is n, meaning that there are n linearly independent uh, directions in this, this, uh, this matrix. Okay, and what I want to tell you now, and, and this is also very easy to check in MATLAB, so in MATLAB I would literally type in rank of CTRB of A comma B. Okay, and controllable CTRB of A comma B gives me this matrix, and then rank checks the rank. Okay, so if this equals N, then the system's controllable. So it's a very simple binary test of controllability that you can use in MATLAB for your particular system, and you can see if it's controllable. Okay, and so what I want to show you now is that there are three equivalent things, uh, things that are equivalent to controllability. Okay, so there are some equivalences that are extremely important. So some equivalent, some equivalences, okay? One, the system is controllable. The system is controllable, that's one. If the system is controllable, and only if the system is controllable, then I can arbitrarily place the poles anywhere I want. So I get arbitrary, and when I say poles, I mean eigenvalues. Arbitrary eigenvalue, sometimes this is called pole. These eigenvalues are called poles for historical reasons, but I get arbitrary eigenvalue placement uh, given some u equals minus kx then I have x dot equals a minus b k x. I can place the poles of this closed loop system anywhere I want. If you give me n distinct uh, eigenvalues that you want the system to have, so if let's say that this is the inverted pendulum and it's unstable, and you want to use feedback to make it stable so that it stays upright, you can pick any eigenvalues you want for the closed loop system, and there exists a matrix of gains k so that this closed loop system will have those specified eigenvalues. That's truly remarkable. Okay? If the system is controllable, and only if the system is controllable, you can place the eigenvalues of your closed loop system anywhere you want. This is arbitrary eigs. That's really, really remarkable. Okay? Now the third thing that this is all equivalent to, the third thing is what we call reachability. Okay, so reachability, and I haven't defined this yet, so I'm about to. Reachability. And so basically what this means is that if the system is controllable, then I can cook up some control input U that will steer my system to any state X in Rn. Okay, so let me just say that one more time. These are all completely equivalent. If one is true, then the other is also, then the others are also true. And here I mean full reachability, full reachability in R n. So I can reach any vector in R n given some control input. Um, and so let me just define this real quick. So the reachable set, the reachable set 
uh, and we're going to call this curly r at t. So the set of states that are reachable at time t, this is equal to all vectors in Rn such that there is an input u of t so that x at time t equals c. Okay, I hope that this makes sense. So the set, the reachable set of states in Rn are all of the states in Rn, all of the all of the the, the vectors in state space where there exists some input u of t that drives my system to that state c at time t. Okay? And so this reachable set is all of the states that I can drive my state to using some control. And so the idea here is that um, if the system is controllable, then the reachable set R t equals all of Rn, which is really awesome. That means I can drive my system state anywhere in Rn with some u of t. Okay? And so these three, uh, these three facts are essentially equivalent. If the system is controllable, which is easy to check using this rank condition, then you can arbitrarily place the poles of the closed loop system anywhere you want. Really amazing for designing this closed loop system. So you can design this to have whatever stability or performance you want. And it also means that if the system is controllable, then there exists a control input that will drive the system to any state you want um, in a finite amount of time. Okay, So that's pretty cool. Um, this, this arbitrary eigenvalue placement in MATLAB, we're going to find that this is using, it's really easy using the command place. So essentially, um, it's going to be something like k equals place a comma b, and then some list of desired eigenvalues. Okay, so it will give you the gain matrix k for your A and B matrices and a specified set of desired eigenvalues. So again, in MATLAB, this is a one-liner. Um, now, one thing that I think is really remarkable and maybe a little hard to understand at first is how this reachable set can be all of Rn. Like, how can I go as far as I want in any state direction if the system's controllable? And so what I like to think about to start is, let's say that I start with, um, I start with some, uh, let's say I have like a unit sphere. Okay, I've got some unit sphere. And I have some, uh, you know, so all of these Cs live in this unit sphere. So this is in R3, my example I can draw in R3. So th if the reachable set is inside of this sphere, meaning I can get to any point on the surface of this sphere in Rn with unit length, given some input in time. The fact that this is a linear system means that if I want to go 10 times farther in that direction, all I have to do is multiply this u by 10. I have to make my input 10 times bigger and my state will be 10 times bigger. So if u of t is 10 times bigger, x of t is also 10 times bigger. So if I'm reachable uh, in all of the directions in Rn, I can go arbitrarily far in any of those directions just by making my input u as big as I want. Okay, now this is the limitation of a linear representation is that we know that, for example, if I'm driving a car, I can't just get from here to Los Angeles in one second just by hitting the gas really, really hard. I can't just make you a billion times bigger and expect to get to my destination a billion times faster. But that's actually because of nonlinear uh, effects that are not modeled here. Okay, but at least in this linear framework, as long as this is valid, if I can reach uh, some direction in Rn, I can go as far as I want by just making my control input bigger. Okay, But the, the upshot is that there are these three kind of equivalent properties of a controllable system. If the system is controllable, then the rank of the controllability matrix equals n, which kind of means that with this input b, I can reach all directions in Rn. In fact, that means that with some, I can cook up a control input u that will steer my system to any vector in Rn. And it also means that I can arbitrarily place the eigenvalues of my closed loop system to be anywhere I want. 
And there's a couple of catches, like I can't have uh, too many repeated eigenvalues. I can't have more repeated eigenvalues than I have columns of B. So as long as these are distinct eigenvalues, I can get away with, uh, with placing these eigenvalues anywhere I want. So for example, if I have an unstable system like the inverted pendulum, I can drive the eigenvalues into the stable left half plane using uh, this pole placement. And in fact, using a very simple one line in MATLAB. Okay, so next time we're going to understand a little bit more about this controllability matrix, um, what it means for a system to be controllable or not controllable, and what it means to have degrees of controllability. Uh, and we'll also come up with some alternative tests uh, to this rank condition that are a little bit more illuminating. All right, thank you.